Welcome back. This is the second edition of the block today. I'm going to try to get used to this while I'm down at my parents. Heading out to Oakville after this. Let's begin. This is the block. I'm your host, Kyle Johnston. It's for the late night addicts. It's for the early morning coffee drinkers. It's where we talk some sports. We break down the games and do a little bit of handicapping. Talk a little pop culture. And obviously I provide some music. It's the least I could do. So, uh, we'll get into a little World Junior talk. Obviously I got some things to get off my chest about that. Talk a little Donald Trump. We got, uh, some NFL football going on. Congratulations to the Pittsburgh Steelers. They are, uh, in in the wild card spot, and uh, the New York Jets, uh, they they were exactly what the New York Jets are when it comes down to crunch time. Like fucking Christ, man! All game, like I never seen a coach smile so much after their team was fucking up. Like that fucking start was horrific, man. Horrific. What three penalties in the first fucking drive, and your fucking punter kicks it like fucking twenty one yards. And fucking Terry Bowles is sitting on the fucking sideline fucking smiling. Smiling. Never seen a head coach smile so much when their team's in utter fucking disaster mode. The playoffs is fucking riding on it. No, I didn't care because I was riding the Bills. I was riding the Bills. But uh, like typical Buffalo Bill fashion, they let them back in the game. They uh, they let the Jets uh, make some adjustments at halftime and basically just run with it. But uh, they pulled through. We'll cash that ticket. We'll cash it. So, uh, and the Pittsburgh Steelers, they took care of business with what, a 26 13 win over Cleveland, something like that. So, uh, no, I didn't, I didn't watch that game too much. I, I basically had the Bills game on the whole time. So, uh, can't comment on, uh, too much about that. But, uh, with no Johnny Manziel, no McCowan, um, I'm surprised the, uh, the Browns hung in as long as they did. I think, uh, 
Antonio Brown had like 184 yards receiving again. That guy's just a fucking stud. If he's not your top in your top three fucking fantasy picks next year, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Like uh, the age of the running back in fantasy sports is uh, dying, dying, and uh, the age of the wide receiver is here. The era of the wide receiver. They're the weapons. They're the weapons. It's a wide receiver league now. But uh, so congrats to the Steelers. But we'll get on to some World Junior talk here. So, uh, as a, you know, I like my hockey. I played hockey growing up. Played at an alright level. So I, I know a thing or two. I know a thing or two. I could, can, I could never compare my experience to uh, an NHL experience and stuff like that. But I've, uh, I've played some competitive hockey. I've been in a dressing room or two. Uh, I know the environment. I know what's going down. And uh, basically... Basically, for Canada this year, we weren't good enough. All around, looking at, our, looking at our roster, we just weren't good enough. We didn't have enough depth. We didn't have enough. Uh, we didn't have enough players who specialize in certain things. It's okay to skate with the puck and stuff, but like our power play was awful, awful. Our forecheck was terrible. There was no forecheck. There was no motherfucking forecheck at all. All in all in all the games. I understand we tried to keep possession of the puck, but like it, it comes to a point, man. It comes to a point, and we and when you can't keep possession of the puck, when your defense can't get the forwards the puck, then we got a problem. Then we got a problem. The other problem is is when you can't score goals. We just couldn't score goals. Dylan Strome, Mitch Marner led the team with four goals apiece. Mitch Marner, like I was saying in my podcast earlier, too little, too late. Too little, too late, son. I know you had a lot of pressure on you. I know the Leaf media had all their eyes on you. But uh, you looked like a typical Leaf, man. Too little, too late. But uh, he did show some guts, I could say, in the big game. You know, he stepped up. So I'll give him that much. He showed, showed some character. But it was a little too little too late. If he, uh, if he had performed earlier in the tournament, maybe we weren't in this position. Same can be said for Braden Point. Same can be said for Dylan Strom. All the media was all over Dylan Strom. Oh, look how good Dylan Strom's playing. Nah. Compared to, compared to the other guys, that Pooley RV guy, nah. Not even close. Not even fucking close. And that Lanny, also on Finland, not even close. Kachuk, playing for... Uh, the USA, he's definitely stepped his game. Not even close. Alexander Nylander, he's definitely stepped up his game over in Sweden with his brother sitting on the sideline with, with a concussion. Yeah, Lee fans. William Nylander, concussion. Not good. Not a good... Basically, all in all, it wasn't a good tournament for uh, Canadian fans. And it w wasn't a good tournament for Lee fans. Put it that way. Now that Timoshov, he showed some uh, signs of flashes. So the Leaf fans could uh, smile at that. McDermott, the defenseman, he was a minus two in this tournament. Not effective at all. I uh, haven't heard much of Kapanen. Mitch Marner, where were you? Where were you in the other games, buddy? So it's pretty sad when I look at the leading scorer on Team Canada sitting here with six points. Shared by point, Stroman Marner. When Puli Arvi leading the way for Finland. Aho, he's sitting there at 12. Austin Matthews, he's certainly not disappointing. Certainly not disappointing is Austin Matthews. He's sitting there at 11 points, 7 goals. Now they did beat up on, what, Slovakia, I'm pretty sure. But uh, hey, if you guys are listening to the block, I had my futures on Sweden. I had my futures on the USA. I wasn't even going near Canada. They were the favorite at, what, plus 143. I'm sitting here on uh, Sweden. At plus 400, and I got the USA at plus 450. So far, hey, if all, if, all, if all the cards fall in the right place, it could be a Sweden-USA final. And that's exactly what I'm looking at. The uh, semifinals go tomorrow. So, uh... So you're looking at the uh, you're looking at the leaderboard in the World Juniors, and not a Canadian to be found. That that's exactly why we're out. And and uh, you know what? 
and it, I'm sitting here and I'm watching, I'm watching uh, Hockey Night in Canada, and uh, I love grapes. I'm a big grapes backer. I'm a fan of them. I'll always support them. He was the first first guy to start teaching me about safety in hockey. First first guy to start teaching me about all that. So uh, as a hockey player. You know, I look up the grapes, but I'm sick and tired of seeing these media personnel, Don Cherry included, sitting here talking about who could have been on this team, who could have been on this team. Ooh, Connor McDavid could have been on this team. Aaron Eckblad could have been on this team. Um, the kid, the kid out in Vancouver, uh, McCowan, McCarran, or whatever his name is, he could have been on this team. Fabry could have been on this team. Darnell Nurse could have been on this team. But you know what I say? Who cares? You have what you have. You pick your team and you go with what you have. You adapt to what you have. I'm sick and tired. Oh, we're so good. We have a yeah, yeah. That's good to have. That's good to have. But let's focus on the present. Let's focus on what we have and what did not work. You know, good on those kids for making those squads. But you know, I wish Montreal had Carey Price right now, but we don't. Could have said through this. Bullshit losing streak that we've been on. Playing some uh, basically a piece of crap hockey. I can't blame it all on the goaltending. But it's been, uh, it's been a shit show over in La Belle Provence. But I can say here, oh, I wish I had Carey Price through that last 15 games. Oh, I wish I had Brendan Gallagher for the last 15 games. But reality is I didn't fucking have him. Reality is Canadians needed to play 500 hockey. Well, they were out and didn't happen. The reality is, is the Montreal Canadiens walked into buildings and thought we were going to win. And we didn't win. Now we're playing better hockey right now. Obviously, getting Brendan Gallagher back for the, uh, the Winter Classic helped. But yeah, so I'm sick and tired of hearing this. Fuck it. I don't care. We have what we have. All those other um, nations can say the same thing about players. I bet you every single one of those nations could say the same thing about a handful of players that they wish they had that they don't have. Whether it's due to suspension, injuries, and or them playing in the NHL. We're in the same boat. Yeah, they're damn good fucking players. And yeah, they would make an impact. But fuck it. We had who we had and we weren't good enough. We couldn't score. We couldn't pass the puck. We had no forecheck. Our goaltending was suspect. Our defense, you know... Joe Hicketts, sitting here picking on Joe Hicketts all the time. It's the guy I heard so much because the rest of our defense was crap. So we had Joe Hicketts, Shabbat, Dermot, Dermot, you know, brutal. Sandheim, Sandheim, I didn't mind Sandheim. Didn't mind Sandheim. Came out as an even. Flurry, Flurry was brutal. Hickey, awful. None of them had any power play goals. All of them had low penalty minutes. So there was like, there was, you know, like sometimes you got to play a little in your face. I understand that the international referees are the international referees. But uh, we, weren't, we weren't really playing who we are. We weren't, it, it didn't look right. It just didn't look right. They, uh, they needed to adapt. We couldn't play this uh, beautiful game that the uh, Canadian national team and world junior teams have been playing lately. We didn't have the talent. But I will give credit to uh, Matthew Barzel. I think he was definitely uh, Canada's best player. I was uh, looking forward to watching him play, and he definitely did not disappoint. Now, could he have chipped in with some more points? Yeah, I do believe, and I wish he did chip in with some more points. Sitting there with three points, two goals. Pretty sure two goals came in one game. Maybe they could have let the uh, the reins off him a little bit more. And the other guy that disappointed me was this Goche kid. This guy that's ranked number four or five overall in the uh, in all these uh, media guys or scouts uh, draft rankings. And uh, I do believe that the only reason why Goche is fourth or fifth overall in some of these guys' scout rankings is because they need a Canadian in there or it wouldn't look fucking right. 
And uh, I don't think he's uh, in, in the top five fucking uh, draft eligible players. Definitely not in this tournament. He was a uh, he was a shadow out there. Big body. He's like six foot four or something like that. Yeah, but he's got to learn how to skate. Basically, he looked like uh, another uh, Gauthier, no, uh, Freddie Gauthier, the uh, Maple Leafs draft pick, the guy that can't skate. Yeah, that, that's basically uh, who he kind of reminded me of. I'd be weary of drafting him in the top. I'd be looking at a lot of these European players, some of these Americans. The Americans have a very young squad. But, um, all right, it's enough of some world junior talk. Before I get into some Donald Trump stuff, it's about time Manchester United started to play like Manchester United. It even took 45 minutes of fucking bullshit for us to wake up. You can only imagine what was said in the dressing room. But uh, Manchester United hosted Swansea City on the weekend. As the uh, Premier League uh, continued their little uh, holiday festival season. Or a holiday festival period. We got some FA Cup action actually kicking off next weekend. So the uh, Premier League will take a little bit of a break. But uh, FA Cup is uh, some pretty exciting football to watch. Now United. I know Swansea are going through uh, some tough times right now. With uh, what, Alan Kurdish is now the interim manager. Monk's been fired. They've been uh, reeling since uh, starting the season off strong. I don't understand some of their lineups, Swansea. I'll get to Swansea in a second. But uh, United, they were hesitant at first. We were playing our typical Manchester United brand. Holding on to the ball. Passing it from sideline to sideline very slowly. Being hesitant with our uh, penetrating runs. Not playing a lot of one-twos. Now I give some credit to Martial on the wing. For trying to make some creativity. But sometimes he had to pass the ball. I can guarantee you that one of the managers spoke into his ear and says, Use your teammates. Use your teammates. He's so fucking fast. He's so agile. If he can just use his teammates with some of his one-twos and some of his tricky moves, that he just fucking flies by uh, defenders. And once he starts using his teammates, the defenders are starting to back off thinking that there's going to be a one-two. Then he can start pulling off his little moves inside the box because he loves to dribble. And this is exactly what happened in the second half. Fucking Martial basically took control of the whole left side of the pitch for United. Fucking was absolute domination. Now I give credit to uh, Louis van Hall. For taking off Jones at halftime and going a little bit more attacking. We had to. Swansea was sitting back too much in the first half. Now Swansea did adapt. And I uh, give credit to uh, Curtis there, the, uh, the interim manager, for making those offensive moves. That really uh, kind of put United on the back pedal sometimes. It was effective. And uh, I, agree. I agree with him. I'd rather go down swinging. Especially if I'm on the road in Old Trafford. I'd rather lose 3-1 or 4-1. And have the potential of drawing it up and putting United on the back and maybe coming out with a point or three points. I'd rather go down swinging. It's exactly what Swansea did. But we went more attacking. Put on Darmy in the second half. Now Danny Blinn played all over the fucking place. He showed his versatility in that, in that matter, but I can't stand him. I just can't stand him. Especially as a center back. God, the guy's crazy. He's so slow. He's so slow. Like, can you be a holding midfielder where... Uh, Certain pay where he doesn't have to uh, use his pace to keep up with uh, the players he's marking. Yeah, yeah, I think he can. I think he can do that. But when he's when he's a left back, he's exposed. The wingers are too too fucking fast. That Barrow guy that came on for City, fuck, he was just eating him alive, eating him alive. Fucking Blin was fucking uh, dancing on his ankles. That's what he was doing. He was barely standing up. But um. Rooney, what can I say about Rooney? He contributed heavily in the second goal. He actually got the second goal. A beautiful fucking back, uh, back foot flick. Or a back heel flick, I guess you could say. Martial basically, uh, by this time, the fucking uh, right back, Angel. Angel Rangel for uh, City. He was fucking, uh, he was having nightmares. He was he was having nightmares for Martial, basically. But. So, um, Martial basically caused so much fucking destruction over there. He used his teammates well. That, um, basically, he faked the pass. Cut down the by Cut down into the byline. Crossed the ball hard into the, uh, middle of the box. And, uh, basically, Rooney let the ball go 
through his body, basically, and uh, there's a beautiful back heel flip. Bounced off the ground, into the side netting, almost in the top corner. It was a fucking beautiful goal. A little, uh, a little moment of brilliance is exactly what United needed. It was a moment of brilliance. Now, Ashley Young, as good as, uh, as much as I'm pumping Mark TL's tires, Ashley Young was a man of the match. Holy fuck. Ashley Young was all over the place on the right side for about 80 minutes before he got subbed off. He was fucking all over the place. He was defending. He was pushing the, um, the Swansea uh, left back. Oh, fuck. Who's the left back in Swansea now? Jeez. Because they had a really weird lineup yesterday. They ran hell to the right. It'll, it'll come to me in a second. Oh, uh, Taylor. Taylor. Neil Taylor. He pushed Taylor right the fuck back. Taylor started off all right, but uh, Young's just stamina. He was all over the place. That was exactly what we need from Young. And Van Hall pushed him right up. Pushed him right up. Especially when we started to see Swansea uh, sitting back. It's exactly what we need. The amount of crosses that we got into the box was beautiful. Like Wayne Rooney had a couple that were basically were going to go in, but they kind of hit the defender without him knowing. So uh, it, was it was nice to see a little bit of old United uh, wing attack. I guess I, I should say. So uh, we played well. Played well. Chelsea. Chelsea stepped up against uh, Crystal Palace. 3-0 win. They're looking a little bit more like the Chelsea team of old. Uh, they're only they're sitting at 23 points on the table. That, that's, it's it's going to be a fucking... Uh, it's going to be a tough hill to climb for the Blues if they want to uh, get into the top four. I think winning Champions League is going to be their only hope of getting back into the Champions League somehow. So, uh, it's going to be a tough hill to climb for the Blues. But Gus Hiddink seems to have them in a good place. Diego Costa stopped bitching. And he's starting to play football. Seth Fabregas looks like he's starting to smile. Instead of sulking. He's starting to play football. He's got John Terry leading the way in the back still. And he, his legs are gone. His legs are real gone. But he's got experience. He's got experience. But when you play against these tougher uh, clubs, the faster clubs, you know, stronger strikers that have size and size and pace like Lukaku's and shit, I don't think John Terry is up for it anymore, man. As much as I, I admire the guy, and I don't mind the guy as a United fan, I like John Terry. Some of the stuff he did off off the pitch, like banging his uh, teammate's wife, probably not the best idea, John Terry, and that's something that I would never do. <laughs> something that could. I don't even think I'd think of, but uh, he's he's a uh, he's a soldier on the pitch, you know. And then the racism thing, I, I think that was a little overblown, but um, it, it obviously did happen, I guess. You know, he was charged, so I don't condone that. But probably a little overblown, but I I would never condone that. And uh, we need to get that shit out of our uh, not only our game but our lives. It's 2015. It's like come on, people. Like I was just watching a thing on Ethiopia. Late last night, I was watching some Anthony Bourdain. Big Anthony Anthony Bourdain fan. Fucking awesome. Guy's awesome. If I could do a if I could do a show like Anthony Bourdain, where I just travel around, and go get drunk, and eat food, and meet people, and learn about cultures and shit, fucking sign me up. Fucking all over that. But I was watching Anthony Bourdain. He was in Ethiopia, and it's where uh, Muslims and Christians like live side by side, literally in fucking villages. And uh, basically, he went back there with a supermodel that came from this village, you know, and she got out, became a supermodel, and she was going back, and a chef that also came from this village, or a couple villages around, or something like that, and they went back to this village, and they helped prepare, you know, like a, uh, a traditional meal, they were going to have a big party, because two of their, uh, one of their, uh, daughters, and one of their sons had come home, and, uh, no, they slaughtered, they slaughtered two lambs, or sacrificed two lambs. Not just one, it's two. Sacrifice one for the Muslims and do it halal style. And they sacrifice one for Christians and do it the Christian style. And they both have two sayings and they, and they all celebrate all together. It's quite wild actually. And they're pretty proud of it, they say. They, uh, they're kind of aware of what goes on in the world. And they're uh, quite, uh, quite proud of uh, how they live side by side over there. And maybe it's something the world should uh, take, a, take a look at. You know? So, uh, yeah, I was watching some Anthony Bourdain pretty late last night. You know, big fan of him. Big fan. But, uh, so, it's good on United. We'll take the three points. We'll march on. Still sitting in fifth place, though. 
And uh, West Ham, they're a point behind us. West Ham had a massive win. Massive win over Liverpool. That They took two games from Liverpool this year. Six points. So that's pretty good. Slavin Bilic has definitely got his... Uh, definitely got the hammers fucking uh, playing well. And I'll tell you what, though. Watching the, uh, watching the game in West Ham. At the bullying grounds. When West Ham scores a goal, and you see the bubbles start flying through the screen, they're flying all over the uh, all over the pitch and all over the stadium, and you got the home crowd chanting. Like I could sing it for you, but uh, I'm not a West Ham supporter. I've sang it many times with my West Ham friends, but uh, forever blowing bubbles. Just go check it out. But uh, it's a beautiful sight. It's one of the uh, it sends chills up my spine actually when I when I watch it live. But Andy Carroll had a big game. Big game against his former club. Beautiful fucking header, Andy Carroll. Pyatt came off on as a sub, so he's getting healthy. The Hammers are staying healthy, and they're getting healthy now, too. So uh, they're going to be a good club to watch coming down the stretch. They're going to be fighting for some European football, I think. I think they're one of the few clubs that have the depth. They have a solid manager with good experience. And, um... And I think they have a big advantage playing at home as well. So, you, you know, they kind of combine all those three, and they're feeling pretty good about their football right now. They seem to be able to adapt, you know. Uh, early on in the season, West Ham with Pyatt leading the way, and Lanzini, and, um, and Sakow. They were a lot more uh, free-flowing. I wouldn't say ticky-tacky, but they uh, held on to the ball a little bit more. A lot more one-twos around the top of the box. Um, they weren't so much direct or, you know, relying on crosses coming in from the wing. And now, you know, with Andy Carroll kind of leading the way, Sakao hurt, Pyatt was hurt for a while, they, they've adapted a little bit. They haven't quite eliminated their passing game. They're still a pretty good pla passing game. Mark Noble. Fucking Mark Noble. Shout out to him, man. He's been playing awesome. Playing awesome. But anyways, so the Prem, Prem definitely didn't disappoint. Everton Tottenham, 1-1 draw today. That was a pretty fucking good game for a 1-1 draw. But we'll move on to Donald Trump. Because Donald Trump's fucking raising the bar. Now, I will uh, say that um, I, w I am going to rip the media here in about five minutes. But let me just describe what the hell's going on. So, uh, so Donald Trump had another rally. As the Iowa caucuses are about a, what, a week away? Iowa caucuses are about a week away. So Donald Trump had another rally. And uh, he was pumping his uh, supporters. He was talking about the Middle East. And talking about the uh, Iranian protests outside the Saudi embassy. Once again, he said he predicted that. And he's saying the Iranians are coming after Saudi Arabia. Which, uh, I, I don't think it's going to happen. That would, that would be too much. That'd be a little bit too much. I don't think the government has that in, in, in plan or in their plans just as a, as of yet, <laughs> as of yet. I don't think it's gonna happen for a while. Those two uh, countries clashing because that would be one hell of a fucking clash. So I don't think that's gonna happen quite yet. Now the people might get a little, uh, you know, unruly, and Saudi Arabia executing forty-seven people in one day is quite maybe a little excessive. You know, hopefully uh, people can realize that. You know. Um, Saudi Arabia executes more people than fucking ISIS, for fuck's sakes. You know? So, uh, people should definitely go and uh, look into that. If you have a problem with ISIS and their executions, go look at Saudi Arabia. But, uh, you know, he started off on that. The Iranian protests outside the uh, Saudi embassy in Tehran, etc., etc., etc. And so, um... And then he, he was going on, and then he st stated that, um... The Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and President Barack Obama and their policies created ISIS, and then uh, then he uh, then he backed the statement up by st uh, stating it again. And now, uh, like I said in my podcast earlier, I I, I don't agree with uh, a whole a whole lot of things that Donald Trump says. I'm uh, definitely not a Republican. I would never be a Republican if I was uh, an American. It's nothing against most people who are. Most people who are, you know, probably not too bad. But there is a good percentage, especially a lot of their leaders that are, uh, they have a lot of fucking crazy ideologies. But 
that being said, I believe that people have the right to believe in stuff as long as they're not hurting people, physically hurting people, or sexually discriminating somebody, or racially discriminating somebody. So I think Donald Trump might have broken a little bit, a, a, a lot of those. You know, I didn't agree with what he said about the Latinos. Don't agree with him saying he wants to lock down all the Muslims. I don't agree with him, you know, bashing some, some of the things about women. Even though I think some of his attacks on women weren't because they're women, I think it's just because he doesn't fucking like them. Like Megyn Kelly and Carly Fiorina. I just think he just doesn't fucking like them. I mean, it wouldn't even matter. Like, look at it. Like, he fucking handed out fucking uh, Graham's fucking phone number. For fuck's sakes, man. Look at the shit that he said about jo uh, Jeb Bush. Holy fuck, man. That's all you gotta do. Look at the shit that he said about fucking Cruz. Like, fuck, man. And the list goes on. So, uh, he's, he's attacked basically everybody. I, I was watching a pretty funny thing about all the people he's attacked. He atta like, like, alright. So you think you have a problem with him fucking attacking some of these girls? He fucking called fucking John McCain. I, I don't even want to use the word, but excuse me, ladies. But he called John McCain a fucking pussy because he got captured and, and was a prisoner of war. <laughs> he said he didn't want his leaders to be prisoners of war. He said that's like fucking weakness. Like, that's fucking awful, man. That's fucking awful. So, uh, Donald Trump's been doing what Donald Trump does. And I don't agree with any of it. But I'm getting here somewhere. I'm getting here. You know? Getting here. And would I want Donald Trump? People have asked me that. No, I would not want Donald Trump as my prime minister here in Canada. That'd be fucking hilarious. I would not want that at all. No. I'm, uh, I haven't voted conservative in a long time. I can honestly say that. I had flip flop from other parties, but definitely not uh, conservative. Anyways, yeah, it's a little bit too personal, but anyways, I kind of agree with him. <laughs> and I do think that Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and the former Bush institution helped create ISIS. I, I fucking do. I don't think it was, it's just all a Democratic fucking. Uh, party here creating ISIS. I think the old former George Bush fucking regime had a lot to do with it as well. Um, and like, like, come on, man. Look at the billions of dollars they fucking wasted sending ammunition, weapons, parts, cars, the hum everything to fucking Afghanistan. Like, the people in Afghanistan were getting this shit and then they were fucking vandalizing it so it wouldn't work, thereby deeming it scrap and they were selling it into the black market to Pakistan. Who would fucking thereby take this shit and fucking make weapons or fucking put on a new fucking tire. You know? And then, then they'd complain and say they don't have the shit. And then American, America, through mostly the fucking Americans' public uh, tax money, would send more fucking shit over. And you, if you don't think that there's a weapons trade going on over in the Middle East, you're fucking hilarious. Look at fucking Russia signed a weapon pact with fucking Syria and Egypt. You don't think they're fucking not trading some weapons? The weapon trade's always been a silent one. Because there's a lot of powerful people involved in that. So if you don't think there's a weapons trade going on in the Middle East, you, you, you're, you're crazy, man. ISIS makes money by trading weapons just as much as they do about oil and a bunch of other shit. But I, I, kinda, I kind of agree with it. You know, they dismembered a fucking Iraqi army with fucking, that was like a million people strong. They had no fucking jobs to go to. They had no fucking education to go to. What do you think half these fucking people are going to do? You know, you fucking alienate a bunch of other fucking people over there. You're sending all this fucking equipment that's getting in the wrong people's hands. You're sending all this fucking money. It's like, holy fuck, man. And then the problem is, is that there's a lot of fucking innocent people in the fucking army, in the American army. that are fucking over there fucking fighting to stay fucking alive or really trying to fucking help people. They're getting fucking like used like this. Like the Hillary, and like Clinton's fucking ripping Trump for his propaganda and shit because he was in some fucking Al Shabab fucking. They Al Shabab used fucking Donald Trump quotes or whatever in a fucking ISIS fucking propaganda thing or whatever. And Trump saying, I mean Clinton saying Trump's the fucking biggest uh, propaganda thing that ISIS has or whatever and shit. I'm like fuck Hillary Clinton, man. Like it's not like you're fucking any fucking better and shit, man. Look what you guys did in fucking Iraq. Look at you, uh, look how you propaganda size that fucking shit. Like, holy fuck, man. Look what you and Obama have fucking done with all your drone strikes and all this fucking crazy shit. Look what your Clinton Foundation has done. You're busted. You're busted along with CNN deleting Bernie Sanders' tweets so you can propagandize your fucking party. It's like, fuck. All these fucking people, man. And what about your emails? Like, fuck. 
proves right there you're a liar. Shouldn't really, like, uh, uh, proves right there that you're uh, accused of being a liar. You know, or uh, what's, the, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, according to sources, according to different sources I've read that you've, uh, that you're a liar. <laughs> I don't know. I've never talked to you. I couldn't fucking tell. I wouldn't want to have a cup of tea with this girl. I can tell you that much. She's one girl I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, just, just don't like. And I'd love to have a female as the president of the United States, man. I would fucking love it. Would love it. Be a good thing for the United States to have a female as the fucking president. Fucking good one though, but not this girl. Not this girl, please. Not this girl. Be patient. Be patient. The right one will come. In my opinion. Like I said, I've always been backing Bernie Sanders here. But fuck, man. Even Bernie Sanders is a little crazy, man. He's, he's a little he's a little crazy, man. The other thing is, like, Bernie Sanders is, like, 78 years old. I don't think he'd fucking even get through his fucking term, unfortunately. Like, I don't want to be, like, I don't think he'd, like, maybe die. But, like, health-wise, you never fucking know, man. You got to be doing a whole bunch of shit as the American fucking president. Like, fuck, man. You got to be on the go. And, like, image is huge, too. Image is massive, too. I don't think, uh... I don't think the American public can uh, really see Bernie Sanders doing a lot of negotiations for them and fucking. I don't think they can see him as a very imposing personality on other national. I mean, other nations' leaders. But um. But yeah, I kind of agree with Donald Trump there a little bit, you know. But um, with that being said, Carly Fiorina said the same thing, and so did uh. Uh, what's his name? Fiorina said the same thing, and uh, I don't think it was Teddy Cruz, it was the other guy. This I am looking up. Carly Fiorina and Rick Santorum said the exact same thing in November. I didn't hear a whole lot about it, media, where the fuck were you on this? Hey, come on, media! Where were you on this? How come you weren't sitting here ripping Carly Fiorina and, bu and uh, boosting this and pumping this in the goddamn media when she came out and said Clinton and Obama were to blame for ISIS? Like, that's fucking big news. That's a Republican fucking uh, candidate fucking coming out and saying this shit. Same with Rick Santorum, even though no one gives a fuck about Rick Santorum. That's big news. I heard nothing about it. Nothing about it. And I've been following all this. Nothing about it. I wonder if that was around the same time that Trump was ripping uh, Fiorina for, because he didn't like the look of her face. Come on, that's just hilarious. But it's not right. It's not right. It's not about looks here, people. It's about you know what you think and what you can do and what your policies are and what you can actually get done. I just think I just don't think Trump likes her. <laughs> Fuck. Is he racist? I do think Trump is racist. Is he sexist? I just think Trump's a fucking asshole. <laughs> Basically, put it that way. Put it that way. If he doesn't fucking like you, he's going to rip the fucking shit out of you. But, you know, people should fire back a little bit at Trump. Trump's a fucking idiot, man. Trump is a fucking idiot, man. He is being a bully. He is flexing his muscles. He's going to start flexing his financial muscles. It's going to be an interesting race coming down the stretch here. You know, they've created a fucking monster here, the media. The GOP. They've created a fucking monster here that's out of control. And uh, he likes to win. And I uh, seen the fucking I uh, seen the finish line in sight, which is uh, gonna be pretty fucking interesting. He is in second place to Teddy Cruz in Iowa, which is pretty fucking hilarious because Teddy Cruz is like son of an immigrant from Cuba. His father was from Cuba. Then they like moved to Canada, and he was born in Canada. Then he moved back to the states. He's got like dual citizenship. I'm pretty sure it's pretty hilarious. And then then the Republicans sit here and bash fucking Obama with all his fucking mystery around his shit. So like it's just. It's just, it's just a fucking vicious circle. It's just, it's just hilarious. But it's been entertaining. You know, America likes entertainment. I've been smiling at it. I just fucking laugh at it. And the funny thing is, I'm sure ISIS sits there and laughs at it a little bit. Because they got nothing to fucking lose. They came out of nothing. They came out of this. But, um... But yeah, I do. I really do. I, I'd, I'd back him that. And uh, then he defends himself. He defends his ban on Muslims after he came out. And uh, said uh, Clinton and Obama were to blame. So I uh, pr pretty fucking hilarious, man. Pretty pretty fucking hilarious. What did he say about defending himself? I don't, I don't want to play the video here.
I don't know. This is a pretty fucking weak. Uh, this is a pretty weak news article. I just clicked on. So basically, basically he goes, look, quote Donald Trump. He goes, look, there's a problem. I bring it up. Other people have called and say you have guts to bring it up because frankly it's true and nobody wants to get involved. Fuck. And then like the problem is is though is like earlier on he's like why he's like why are we getting involved? He's like where's Germany and when he was saying about Ukraine and stuff like that, man. I haven't heard Donald Trump talk about Ukraine in a little while. I guess ISIS is taking full front here right now. And I have been keeping an eye on the uh, Ukraine uh, Russia situation, so uh I could uh, talk about that if I wanted to, but we'll save that for another day. That is uh, one of the uh, first things I usually go and keep an eye on. And uh, ViceNews.com is a great place if you want to go keep an eye on the uh, Russian-Ukraine situation over there. It's pretty interesting, to say the least. But he said he's not bothered by it. By the, uh, the propaganda video and when uh, Shabab used them. Not bothered by the uh, Hillary Clinton's uh, accusations of him being ISIS's best recruiter. Donald Trump, quote, a quote, Donald Trump tweet, Al-Shabaab, not ISIS, j just made a video on me. They all will as front runner. And if I speak out against them, which I must. And then he's like, Hillary lied. <laughs> just fucking hilarious, though. Just hilarious. But um, before, I, before I go here, we'll uh, update a couple games here. So, uh, before I get to the NFL, as you know, we're on the under 141 in the uh, Illinois Fighting Illini Ohio State game. It is 30 26 going into the second half. Seattle Seahawks on the road in Arizona. We're on the Seahawks plus 6.5. They're up 30 to 6. And we're also on the St. Louis Rams minus three. The St. Louis Rams are up 16 to 10 going into the third quarter. We're also on the uh, Green Bay Packers tonight in the Sunday Nighter. As well as the Utah Utes is my other game on the uh, college basketball hardcourt. I do think it's going to be a USA Sweden final. In uh, in the World Juniors, sorry about that. I was getting a little distracted. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a USA Sweden final. I'll uh, have a little bit of comments about that after the semifinal games. Obviously, I'll have some picks for you tomorrow. I'm head back to Oakville, so I'll be able to you know be back to normal a little bit. Be back to normal a little bit. So uh, I like the sounds of that, and uh, thank you for joining me. Remember, you can find my work on Twitter, at KJ underscore the block. You can find my work on my blog site, kylejohnsontheblock.wordpress.com. And hey, if you're not laying the money down on the table, you're not winning. God will begin to speak forth. Our righteousness is of him, saith the Lord. Get back!